faster way to mask out your subjects from your video in Final Cut Pro 10. So here is the masked out version of the video that we're going to be using in today's tutorial. So you can see that we just masked it out very cleanly. To make this work is have your video in the timeline. Go to where you want this effect to start. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to press M on the keyboard to add a marker here, maybe to add another marker. So from the first marker to the second marker is how long I want this effect to last. I'm going to press Command B to split that clip right on to that marker. And then on the second marker, we're going to press Command B to split the clip. So with this clip selected, we're going to right click and go to new compound clip right over here. Option G. I'm going to name this Bad Bunny video one or something. Double click that grouped clip. What we're going to do is go over to file at the top, go down to share, and then we're going to go to export file. So just save this as a regular clip. So go to settings, make sure all of the settings are the same. Click next. And I'm going to save this to our desktop. So click save. So once we have saved that video, we're going to jump into Adobe Photoshop beta so make sure you download the beta version if you don't know what that is you can go over to the creative cloud application but we're going to try the photoshop beta make sure you install it and open this okay and then go to open and then we're going to import that video that we just saved which is this one here so go ahead and click on open so once you've imported the video into photoshop it should look like this and then you're going to have your timeline so just go over here to this layered stack line icon click on that and then go to the render video button we'll go ahead and click on that i'm going to name this bad bunny GIF. We're going to save this to our desktop. We're going to create a subfolder so it can save all of the images. So we're going to do sequence new because I already have one named sequence. Range, we want to make sure it's set to all frames and click on render. Photoshop's going to convert that video into an image. So now we're going to go back to file at the top, go down to scripts, go to load files into stack. And then from here, we're going to go to use folder. So make sure it's set to folder. Click browse. From here, you're going to select the sequence new folder. Go ahead and select that folder and click open. And you're going to see it adds all of our images into this here. Click OK. And you're going to see it's adding it in real time. I'm not speeding this up and it's already finished. So now you can kind of see what's happening. Each image is a frame. So we're going to select the first image. If you have this, which is the most important part, is the contextual taskbar. We're going to go over to window and make sure contextual taskbar is enabled, which is this here. If you don't see it, we're going to go ahead and go to this kind of gray line line to move this over closer to the layers here. If you also don't have the layers, just go to window and make sure layers here is enabled. And they're going to select the first layer and you're going to hit remove background. And it should, if you press the backslash button, you should see the mask, what it's taken out. So everything that's red has been removed to temporarily because it's not really erased. It's just masked out. So you can always delete this and have your original back. So that's pretty much how that works. So we're going to select the second image and we're going to hit remove background. And you're just going to do that for each one. So you can see how much quicker this is compared to the draw mask in Final Cut Pro. So once you have finished removing the background of each of those images in the layers, we're going to go to the timeline. If you don't have the timeline, just go back to window here and make sure timeline is checked. And then yours is probably going to look like this, create video timeline. You don't want that. You want to make sure you click on the down arrow and you click create frame animation. So go ahead and click on that and then click on it again. And then you should have this set to zero seconds. So you want to do no delay and this should bring it back to zero, but make sure that's checked. Yours might be like five seconds, which is not what you want. But once you have that first one added, you're going to go back to this line kind of icon and they're going to go to make frames from layers. So click on that and that's going to add all of our layers into to the timeline right here. So now if you push play, it's going to animate because it's it's what makes a video is frames. So now we're going to go back to file. We're going to go to export and then we're going to go to save for web and then we're going to save the preset. So click on preset and select a GIF 128 dithered and then we're going to select GIF right over here. Make sure this is set to selective fusion. Make sure transparency is enabled. This is very important. Make sure that's enabled. And then you want to make sure that no transparency dither. You want to change that to diffusion and then make sure the width is the same as your video clip and click save. So I'm going to name this new bad bunny and click save. So now we're going to jump back into Final Cut Pro and import it into our timeline. Okay, so now this is the main timeline with our groups clip here. So we're going to go to file and then we're going to go over to import, which is right over here or command I. And then we're going to import that GIF that we just saved, which is going to be new bad bunny. If I press space on the key, Board. You're going to see it's a little bit slow, but we're going to fix that very easily. Just click on import selected and then we're going to add that one. Click and drag that right above the area that we just split our clip here with 
the groups clip. We're going to go over to the retiming option, click the down arrow, and we're going to reverse the clip because for some reason when we export it from Photoshop, it kind of does the opposite. So I'm sure there's a tool or a setting to change it, but I just can't figure it out yet. And then we're going to go to the end of that video clip right over here. Click on that and drag that so that it matches that bottom grouped clip length right over here. If we go back and push play, it should be perfect. If it's delayed by like a little bit, as you can see, it kind of is. Zoom in and then bring this down to one more frame, which is about here. This should be perfect now. And then you can just get rid of one frame. It's not that big of a deal. Delete the next one because we don't really need it. And now we have perfectly masked our subjects. And then the last thing we need to do though, is we don't want to use the quality of this GIF. We want to use the original video. So in order to do that, we're going to select the GIF, go over to the video inspector settings and go to color right over here, the color inspector, go to exposure and bring the globals all the way down so that it turns the image black. We're going to duplicate the original video clip. Let's hold option and drag upwards, duplicate that clip. So select the GIF video, change the blend mode from normal to stencil alpha. So everything in black is not shown and everything inside of this is shown underneath if that makes sense. So select both of those clips. And then lastly, we're going to group those together. So hold option G or right click and do new compounds clip. And then this is the final effect. So now if we were to move this over, we have now successfully masked them out completely. And it looks absolutely fantastic. From here, you can do whatever you want. You could do a cloning effect. So in order to do that, just hold option, drag downwards, and then we're going to drag that up and we we'll go over to transform. We're going to move this like over here. And then if I want that to be underneath him, you can just drag it below. And then just do that again, hold option, drag underneath, go over to the X axis and move it over to the left. And now you have a really cool clone masked effect that you can really get creative with. So you now we have this super cool masked out effect. You can even have them play at different times. So like, let's say I want the main clip to come in first and then the other ones, you can do something like this. You can do something like that. And lastly, you would of course add in any other effects that you want underneath, like the scribble film leaders, which is from my pack, link in the description. I'm gonna end it beneath. So now we have a really, really cool and interesting effect like this. If you found this video helpful at all, please consider leaving a like and comment down below if you have any other video ideas similar to this, or if you want more masking effects now that we know how to do it perfectly in Final Cut Pro. I'll catch you guys next time.